the mysterious Nazca lines, the riches of the Incas, the treacherous beauty of the Amazon rainforest, all a vital part of the ancient land known as Peru. In this country filled with history and natural wonder lies Lima, Peru's capital. A large metropolitan city with more than 7 million inhabitants. Its friendly people, winding roads, and colorful buildings give it a unique character. Nestled in the midst of a noisy, traffic-filled city is this tranquil retreat where Peruvian sculptor Felipe Lederston lives and works. Born in Peru to Swedish industrialist, Felipe developed a fascination with the native tribes and their land. You can travel miles and miles into these jungles. I love the jungle. I think it's where you can be the, the nearest to God. And these people represent the gardens of that jungle. In his studio in Lima, Felipe pays homage to the tribes he calls the sons of our land. His art takes the form of life-size statues of a people he fears may not exist for much longer. To create his art, Felipe knew the only way to reach the most remote areas where these tribes live was to travel the many rivers of the Amazon basin on a boat named for the Inca emperor Pachacute that doubles as a studio. Felipe and his assistants set out in search of their subjects. Indians have differences. It's not that the Indian is an Indian and they all just a feather in the head and it's an Indian. Here they have nations. They are different. They have different designs, each other. And of course I choose somebody that will be, for me, aesthetic, you know? With a mission to fulfill, Felipe's work immortalizes the indigenous people of the Americas. Now I have 140 statues, and I'm thinking of doing 250 as a whole. I need to go to Alaska. I need to do some more in the United States, Mexico, Canada and some more in South America than I have done it. He has managed to travel great distances to capture the images of many tribes. The Shipibo, Iquito, Orejon, and Quechua of Peru. The Marubo and Arara tribes of Brazil. The Acahuayo and Yanomami tribes of Venezuela. The Cuna tribe of Panama. The Bribri of Costa Rica the Garifuna of the West Indies, and the Pueblo, Navajo, Apache, Arapaho, Sioux, and Shoshone Bannock of the U.S., to name a few. And it was on one of those trips to the United States that Felipe became acquainted with another native tribe, the Seminole Indians of Florida. Researchers say the Seminole tribe of Florida can be traced back at least 12,000 years. Their dwindling numbers have raised concern that they too may vanish one day. Felipe's vision of preserving native people convinced members of the South Florida Seminole tribe to participate in his work. But unlike most of his projects, this time his subjects would come to him, traveling thousands of miles from South Florida to Lima, Peru. For these natives, the journey to South America is a first. But the real adventure is just beginning. I make scoops of that. It is the most rewarding thing that I have done in my life. Just to be a friend, also show him some guidance. <laughs> Not only are you giving time to a child, but you're also giving it love. Kids are sponges. They imitate. They emulate. This is what I do. Anything's possible. You could do it, too. Bus has helped me with school. Uh, I can't do his math homework real well because it's all above my head, but I can at least teach him... Um, some of the tricks of the trade of how doing the little things over and over again actually makes a huge difference. All of you have special and all of you have special talents. Well, if I can, you know, help just one child, you know, if I can have some type of positive influence on one child's life, then 
That's what this mentorship program is about. It's a gay club. It's only in the inner city. Those drug addicts have to come in. It's a moral issue. I could never get it. One of the biggest challenges in the fight against AIDS is overcoming the myths and prejudices associated with the disease. At the Arthur Ashe Foundation, we're working to help people better understand the truth about AIDS. Because AIDS isn't their problem, it's our problem. The Arthur Ashe Foundation for the Defeat of AIDS has the support of players worldwide. Now we need yours. True or false? Donating or receiving blood is a high-risk way to contract HIV. Now, this was before 1985, but there were instances where some people did get HIV from receiving a blood transfusion. That was before we knew a lot about HIV and AIDS and how they're passed on from person to person. really was. Hi everyone, my name is Barbara Sloan. As you probably already know, my job usually has me at the Action News anchor desk, but recently I got a break from all of that. The station gave me an assignment anybody would love. They told me to go out west and look for dinosaurs. Well, what's left of them anyway. It was a great trip and we came back and made a very special program for you. I think you might even feel like you were on the trip too. Okay, now who is really good at computers? Great. All right, you two guys sitting on the mouse will run the program. Just use the mouse to get around. Step right up. Step right up and keep your eyes on the rocks. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Dig Those Dinos. You picked the right program to come to. If you want to see dinos, if you want to dig for dinos, or if you just want to dig the dinos, we've got dinosaurs that have never been seen before. They couldn't have been. They've just been found, but we got them. We've got little dinos, big dinos, and the most ferocious dinosaur of all. Oh, no, it's not T-Rex. So just follow the dino footprints, and they'll tell you where to go. Any questions? Not a problem. Just press here. Let's try places to go. I want to see the dinosaur digs in America. Mm -hmm. 